Hi, welcome to our module on the traditional theater of India. This module covers theater, dance, and some of the uh, epic stories like the Mahabharata, which are something that seems to almost transcend the theater. Uh, it's the basis of many dramas. It's also the basis of, uh, it's obviously an epic poem that we looked at in the last unit, and it uh, appears in a lot of uh, important Indian films as well. So uh, in this module at a glance you'll see the tasks that we're going to complete as well as the learning objectives. I'm not going to dwell on those right now because we've got a lot to cover. Let me go right into what our major discussion here is and the reason that I want to go over this right now is because it's something that you're going to be looking for material for as you review the reading, and the different films. You know, the goal of this discussion is to find interesting examples of Indian traditional cultural activities like theater pieces, dance forms, uh, literature, like epic po uh, poems like the Mahabharata, etc., and where they are placed in modern Indian film or where you can find resources about them streaming on YouTube or other streaming sources. So it's, again, we're using the collective uh, research power of our entire class to bring together a lot of resources for us to take a look at in this area. So your first post is going to be a one to seven minute clip of an Indian cultural festival theater piece or traditional dance example or an example of rasa, which is something that you're going to learn about a little later, as it presents itself in Indian film or in documentary form streamed online. You're going to post that link, uh, a link to this clip, at, in a new discussion thread. This is your post, your initial post. Then you're going to describe that clip. What are we seeing? Uh, why is this an example of uh, Indian cultural tr uh, festival or a theater piece, dance, etc. Give us specifics, to, but confine your description to about one paragraph so it's fairly easy to read for people that come to it. Uh, you can also add a link to a website that gives uh, maybe more information about this cultural festival or theater piece. That's post number one. Second post, you're going to review the clips that are posted by your fellow students, and you're going to select one one that has not already been commented on, and you're going to add a one paragraph comment that expands on the description that the original uh, person who posted it made, uh, gives more details about the tradition, perhaps adds another web link to give us more information about it, okay, basically expands the information on that cultural tradition. You may uh, disagree with the person that posted it, you may think it's not a particularly good example of that cultural tradition, and you've got every opportunity to do this, okay? Uh, be sure that your commentary does not just restate what is stated in the original post, okay? And post number three, you're going to find a clip that has been commented on, and then you're going to tell us where this cultural tradition, this theater tradition, or this dance tradition, where its origins finds itself on the Indian history timeline. What empire was it during? Uh, what to events would you find it? What date do you date this cultural tradition to its origins? Place it on the timeline. And then for the fourth post, you're going to uh, just continue this dialogue, comment on any posts that were uh, uh, posted to your original thread, or continue the dialogue on any of the comments that you've made. Now, I've already mentioned several things about uh, the Indian history timeline, which is something that uh, is a really significant body of work that I want you to refer to throughout our time in these two modules. You're familiar with it already, and it's going to be a big part of uh, our discussion here. It is going to be something that you are going to use to complete the test, which is a matching test in which you're going to be filling in some blanks on the timeline, as well as placing some things on this timeline that may not already be listed there. 
things that are mentioned in the reading and in the viewing. So whenever you see a date come up, I want you to sort of visualize it on this timeline and make some notes accordingly. Uh, one of the most important periods that we're going to look at in this timeline is this period right here that we see really um, after the birth of the Buddha on through until 100 uh, AD, we call it, or CE. This is a crucial period of human history when there was an enormous blossoming of ethical and philosophic inquiry the world over. Um, some of the most important things that occurred during this were uh, Plato's writings took place during this, Aristotle's writings took place during this, the Mahabharata was composed during this, uh, Buddhism spread the world over during this, we see the birth of Christ, the work of John the Baptist during this period, as well, obviously, Christ's teachings during this period. So it's a really fascinating time in human history when uh, there was a sort of collective consciousness to expand uh, the ideas of ethicism and religious teachings the world over. You may remember Ashoka, who began as a, a tyrannical ruler, uh, had a uh, awakening and ultimately created pillars throughout India with uh, enormous uh, ethical uh, instructions on them that even included uh, uh, directions in uh, to be humane to all creatures, uh, human and animals the world over. And um, there are still a number of people who follow those teachings religiously in India to this day. So this is an enormously important period of ancient history in India, and you're going to find a lot of things on in this area. Uh, and I'm going to mention another very important one of those, and that is uh, the mystic Bharata composed it something called the Natya, Natya Shastra, which is a really important set of texts that tell us how Indian theater Sanskrit drama, particularly, should be performed. Uh, and I'm going to get a little bit more specific in that as we move forward and take a look at some of our readings. Okay, so we're going to be using a very important online text, different from your uh, Asian traditional uh, theater text, called An Introduction to Theater in India. And they are linked in this document. Here we're going to take a look at Vedic performances, okay? Uh, these are uh, more in the beginning in the period of uh, the civilization of the Indus Valley. You may, uh, may remember the Harappa culture from that period, 1500 BC, okay? Um, so these are important uh, prehistorical um, Bronze Age performances. The Rig Veda, a great deal was um, talked about in the uh, story of India about that. Now as we move forward, we're going to see a lot about the Mahabharata. Uh, here we're going to read about the Mahabharata, its composition. There was also quite a bit about it in the story of India. Uh, however, uh, it is such an important part of Indian history. We're going to do a little more reading on that, and we're also going to see an important documentary here about that in this module. Okay, so we see the story also the the Ramayana, uh, which is just a little later than the Mahabharata, uh, another uh, epic saga that is uh, one of the foundational um, pieces of literature in uh, Indian and a source of a great deal of Indian drama. So now we're going to move into Sanskrit drama and the creation of theater. It is uh, a part of the mythology as well as a, the sort of a lot of Indian mythology is really historical fiction. It has a strong basis in history as we heard about uh, with the Mahabharata, uh, we come later archaeologists discovered that many of the events in the Mahabharata actually occurred 
and took place. And, and although the Mahabharata was composed over a period of several hundred years and was an, originally an oral history, the exact dates of uh, many of those events were not specific in the Mahabharata, but we, we understand that many of these events were based on history. Um, the Nadi Shastra, is, uh, its origins are uh, in uh, the Hindu religion and begins with the Brahma passing along uh, the concept of what they call the fifth Veda. And remember, the Vedas are the pillars of teachings within Hinduism. So the fifth Veda, uh, which is essentially performance, theater and dance, uh, was created uh, by the, the mystic teacher Bharata to communicate the four Vedas to everyone. So there were those that could read Sanskrit, those that would receive the teachings of the Vedas through the Brahmins, but also those that could, sort of the common people who could be taught the Vedas through the fifth Veda, which would be theater and traditional dance. So the Bharata, uh, the mystic Bharata, created the Nadi Shastra as a way of really codifying in very specific terms how uh, that dance was going to take place and how that theater was going to be laid out. So uh, in this period, also in this seminal period uh, between uh, 100 uh, and 300 CE, or what we sometimes refer to as AD, uh, again, um, we're looking at uh, the period when, uh, the later period when the Mahabharata and the Ramayana were, com were composed, uh, the beginning of the Kushan Empire, all right? Um, uh, and again, uh, lots of things happening in Palestine uh, during this period as well, um, early teachings of Christianity. So during this, uh, the sort of latter part of this flourishing of asceticism and philosophy, we also see the creation of theater in its most uh, traditional form in India, the Nadi Shastra. Now, this gives instructions on almost all aspects of theater dance, okay? Uh, we're going to break this down a little bit, and you can see this in um, the reading as well. Uh, how the theaters are supposed to look, um, the, the stage, the theory of poetry, the use of voice, makeup, costume, acting styles, dance technique, even theater criticism is broken down in the Nadi Shastra. Okay, it also gives very specific instructions about the types of plays uh, that are to be formed and how those plays are laid out. Um, it dictates that there's a beginning, the effort, the possibility of attainment, the possibility of resolution, and the possibility of resolution still overshadowed by conflicts and obstacles, and finally, the resolution. Uh, now, you may feel that this information is going by you pretty quick, but it is restated in this section of your text, so I want you to be sure to take some notes on that. There's also a a short section that I'm having you read in the uh, in Asian traditional theater and dance, your uh, original text.